Maybe I'm having ready to light a little Caesar's pizza. <laughs> I'm ready to jump out the dress on you. Hey guys, Nikki here and I got a question and answer again. This one will be related to my health, my stress, my menopause, and my grieving. So if you're ready, let's go. This video will be sponsored by Ashimari Hair. So if you don't want to see the hair part, I will timestamp it right here so you can get straight to the questions. But as of right now, you have to hear from our sponsors. Hop straight into the packaging Ashimari hair you guys know I just reviewed for them that beautiful blonde wig that you guys fell in love with so we're gonna try something new they put an edge band around here to secure the box I really like that because I hate when those boxes pop open there is a two pack of wig caps lashes razor edge brush slash comb another edge band and they put a gift in here. So cute. Some roses with a necklace. That necklace is really cute. I really, really, really love the chain on that necklace. Really, really do. They also put a robe in here. And this is 26 inches. This is a beautiful body wave highlight. 26 inches and baby straightened. It is so long. So let me show you the edge. Not the edge. The hairline and etc. That's what you have right there. In the inside you do have two combs on the side. There's a strap in here if you want to wear the wig glueless. There's an adjustable strap at the back along with another comb. And there's their tag with the hair care instructions on the back of the tag. So let's move straight into the install. Blue, blue, blue. Let's get it. I put the robe on. If it's great and comfy, we're going to take our foundation and turn the lace the color of our skin tone. If you're no stranger here, you know that's how I do it. Let's adjust this wig and see what we are working with. So this is a wax stick. Everything I use is always linked below the video right up under the information about the hair. Brush everything out the way so you can go to work. Got to go to work on Myra's feet. Nah, no, for real. Let me stop playing. Let's cut these ear tabs off, which you know I hate, guys. Y'all know I hate this part. Y'all know I really, really do. But we got to get it done. So, yeah, let's just do that. And this is what you have right there. Pull that ear out and make sure it's adjusted right. I'm going to take my got to be glue. This is what I adhere the wig down to on my head because I don't actually use glue. This is actually gel. And I'm going to put this around the perimeters of my head and dry it with my dryer, my fan. And then after it is tacky, you go ahead and pull it back down and push the wig into your skin. And make sure that it is good and adhered to the head, guys. After this, we're going to take the band that they gave us and tie it down and let it dry a little bit more. We're back. It's good. So we're going to take the even spray and this is what we melt the lace into our skin with. I'm going to go around the perimeters of my head once again. This wig was pre-plucked but feel free to go in and pluck it a little bit more. The knots are really tiny on this wig. I did not bleach them. And it's just a very good dense wig. So after that is dry we're going to tie this back down. We're ready to go, so let's go ahead and cut the lace. I'm going to cut it in sections, and then I'm going to take some of that even spray on my finger and just go back in and press it in to melt the lace a little bit more. Do your whole entire forehead, and then take your makeup and go ahead and blend the lace in. This is very important, guys. So this is my liquid foundation and I am going to go in with my powder foundation to set it as well. So now that we have the wig on, let's work into styling. I didn't know what I wanted to do guys, but I know I needed to come through because I cut those ear tabs off and I didn't want it shedding. And so I'm just going to take my hot comb, my wax stick, my brush and make it look as neat as possible. Um, I'm going to throw some curls in the front. Some layers in the front too, but you guys know I love me a natural body wave. I just wanted to make it um, look a little bit more framed at the front. And that's what I'm doing, just curling it up. I'm going to comb that out with my fingers. 
And yeah, I love this. I love the density. They have all kind of wigs over there. Straight, curly, wavy, black, white, whatever you want. Maybe not white, blonde. <laughs> and they do have split and quad pay options. I love this company. I haven't had any problems out of any of the wigs they sent me. I did put it up in a ponytail because I just wanted to look different. So I will link the hair below along with the discount code. Please give Ashmari hair a try. This hair is gorgeous, right? <laughs> so let's get straight into the question. All right, guys, y'all are loving these questions and answers. And I figure out it's a way... And I just figured that it's a way for me to get more content out and uh, for you guys to get clarification on questions. Now, this one is a little different. It's an update on my health, my weight, what I do to cope and etc. cetera. Um, because believe it or not, a lot of people do ask me, hey, can I get an update on your H. pylori? Hey, can I get an update on your parasites? How's grief coming along? So this was the opportunity to ask that i do recall a few questions that wasn't related to that and i'm going to skip over them because i was very specific on um the kind of questions i wanted so i'm not going to answer them so let's get this wig on all right y'all let's get this party started here i go y'all now y'all told me i need some bifocals now now all the makeup i will be using will be at the beginning of I me mean, under this video it's nothing that I'm not doing anything different. This routine is over on my makeup channel, so I will link it right here, and I will link it below. This is the Elemis uh, Pro Collagen. I'm using this as moisturizer to moisturize my face. I do have lash extensions on. I put them on myself in my last vlog, I want to say, but I probably will still put a strip on the top because i can <laughs> so let's see the first question say beautiful queen live your best life thank you i guess she was responding to the picture that was in the background of this i can't even remember what i put in the background of this i'll put it right here but thank you so much baby mama need a little bit of my more moisture now 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 so are you okay i love you love you back boo oh Y'all ask me this all the time. And the best way I can answer is I am way better than I have been the last three years. Y'all, the last three years, maybe four now, has tried to take your girl out. I have wanted to be taken out, if that's how you say that. It has been some days I was just like, if I got to wake up like this every day, why? Why? <laughs> why? Horrible feeling inside, like this empty um like i imagine how a car feel when it's running on fumes like that's how i have felt a lot um to preface this video let's start my daddy got stomach cancer i got ate up by parasites uh, my family was getting harassed, then my son got murdered, then um, my sister-in-law passed away, my father-in-law passed away, and I really could keep going. Like, you know how the shade room had, they got that calendar, and every month they put something crazy that happened? I can literally do that for every month, <laughs> almost, especially last year. I got hit by 18-wheeler. It was like, who put... Who put voodoo on me at this point? So, um, I was just joking with Nicole the other day. I texted her and I said, hey, we don't have anything to put on our calendar for January and February. <laughs> and Lord, thank you because I really went through a lot. And I know they say God give his um, battles to his strongest soldiers, but Lord, Lord baby so i will say this health wise and mental wise i am a whole lot better than i've been in a long time like it was literally times i didn't i would watch stuff on tv and say i would never be able to go out to eat again because i couldn't eat or i would um <laughs> mm. oh wow it's too early for that I've been through a lot, y'all. So when y'all see me happy, 
please just let me be happy that's why i don't even too much pay attention to what's being said anymore or anything i just do whatever is gonna make me smile that day because baby and not to mention i went through a divorce so anyway whoo i don't know what what happened just then i think i'll be back i'm literally full-fledged crying so let me let me skip back to the her because what it's like when I just think about everything I've been through. And people used to say, it just feel like it's always something. Yeah, it was. And the shit almost killed me, literally. If, yeah. Not to mention, remember I was getting stalked by my neighbor, then he murdered somebody. <sighs> yeah, I wasn't ready. I miss ma'ams. <laughs> Let's move on, honey. So the next question say, what did you do to lose weight after 40? Girl, I'm struggling. Well, I got sick, y'all. So it started out, um, I went to Whataburger one day. I went to a friend's house and I was perfectly fine. I was leaving and started having shortness of breath and was like, whoo, I can't breathe. But I just thought, I, I don't know what I thought. It wasn't like... I'm about to die. I can't breathe. But I was having a hard struggling. So I just thought I was coming down with something. But it just got worse and worse. And I ended up having to drive myself to the hospital. Um, because I got scared. And it was like literally this time. Literally this time. Because it was like the week COVID shut us down. So I was scared. Like oh my gosh. I hope. I oh shoot. I hope I don't have COVID. And so I went to the ER. And so what they diagnosed me with was GERD, which I later found out that wasn't GERD, which I later, I just paid a hospital bill, which I shouldn't have because they did misdiagnosed me. But um, they put me on Principrazol and sent me on by my business. Well, the whole time, it was literally the parasites trying to get out of my body. I'm jumping off the subject. But so what I did was I was like, oh, I don't like the way that felt at all. So I asked them what I could do. And so they was like, switch your diet up. So I switched my diet up. I cut out all acidic food, all fried food, all fast food, all soda, all sweets. Like I literally went cold turkey on a lot of stuff. That's how scared I was of that feeling. I hated how that made me feel. And so in the process, I thought that's how I was losing all the weight or I still feel like it is how I was losing the weight because a lot of people are gonna say well you got sick that's how you lost weight tomato tomato I still did what I needed to do to get on track so what happened was like the parasites and the H. pylori had took over my body so bad that my body was just purging and so I ended up getting abscess I had to go get cut out like the infection it's not an infection the parasites or whatever was trying to get out of me any kind of way guys and so i went down this long journey and it just eventually led to um me not being able to eat some days at all i would like literally look at food and cry or i would force myself to like eat a baked potato or half a can of soup or something like that and so i looked up and i was like 80 90 pounds lighter I, I was like 268 ish and I looked up and I was like 220, <laughs> 210. Then I got out the twos. I'm like, hold on. So the lowest I got down to while being sick was 178. And when I was 178, I looked so freaking skinny. So what ended up happening was I lost a lot, a lot of weight and I got scared because I don't like being skinny, y'all. I, I mean, I was never skinny, but whoa, I look so small to me because I just, I just like a bigger frame on me. And so what I started doing was eating potatoes, any kind. I go to Chick-fil-A, get fries with Chick-fil-A sauce. I do a baked potato because I was scared. I was, I didn't want to lose any more weight. And this was after parasite treatment. But what that did was up my cholesterol. So it was like I couldn't win for losing. So what I just started doing was eventually i started introducing stuff back into my diet which i kind of regret now <laughs> because i just wish i would have stayed on track because i'm back having digestive issues every now and then every now and then not nothing like i had but like now i am back up to 196 and i'm just scared to get into 200s again so i'm just gonna go backwards and do that same step like just the clean that really you guys 
think all these tricks and stuff, really eating right will do it. I didn't exercise. I didn't do any of that. All you got to do is balance that diet and move your body. You ain't got to exercise. Just if you just, just move your body, child. Move your body. Move your body. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get to the questions, but whew, I have to make sure I didn't miss that person. So it's say, but if you're struggling, I know there's a lot of peer pressure out here right now. Um, you guys saw I went to the OBGYN and he was trying to put me on some of glutide. And at first I was excited. And then I was like, why am I getting on this? The side effects are going to eat me up. I already got digestive problems. And somebody said they had projectile vomit, projectile diarrhea. And I, I was like, oh, no, I'm tripping. And I was like, I only want to lose like 20, 25 more pounds. I could do that in a month. So why would I pay all this money to get on? And I just can't, y'all. I just don't want to do it. And I don't want to say why because um, another YouTuber has started her journey. And I don't want people to think I'm shooting slugs at her. It's like I tell y'all all the time, I can't say nothing now. I just feel like I don't need the medication for health reasons. And so I just couldn't do it in the end. So anyway, um, child, get the moving around, honey. So next question, I might cut all that out because I still don't want no problems. Are there any vitamins or supplements you recommend to manage hormones? Let me tell you something. This post-menopause, look, the whole time I was going through pre, peri, and menopause, the doctors never suspected it because, for one, I was young, and for two, I, I, I'm sorry if you're another race, but they think all black women come in their hypochondriacs. Dude, I was losing tons of blood. I was skipping my, I, everything that I read up on now, I was experiencing, and they was just like, lose weight lose weight like it's your anxiety like ugh. so what i would recommend mostly is because i don't take supplements and stuff for menopause but what i will tell you is i love this channel or to balance my hormones i will leave her channel right here she's been a lifesaver when i thought i was dying or didn't understand nothing that was going on with me her channel made me feel normal again so this is what i will tell you to balance your hormones you have to use them hormones. <laughs> and I'm trying to keep this kid friendly. But you you literally are going to have to like. Use. I know you don't feel like it most of the time when your hormones are imbalanced. I know, I know, I know. But believe it or not, that cardio you get from it. And y'all know what I'm talking about. We all grown here makes you feel so much better <laughs> and so what i would recommend is just balance your diet the days i eat better i feel so much better than when i eat junk i ain't gonna even lie um and move around the days i sit still oh my bones hurt my body hurt you're gonna have to move around and you're gonna have to work on your diet like fruits vegetables all that stuff that's really what keeps you going and of course i don't have any in particular but get you a good multivitamin i will link one below i also go and do vitamins straight in my arm you guys haven't been with me in a long time but you know i do the um liquid iv therapy they can add vitamins up in there and that boosts you a whole lot because it goes straight in your bloodstream and skip over your digestive system so I would recommend eating right, getting you some fruits and greens and stuff in your diet, um, fiber, collagen, and get the moving around and get to getting that cardio, honey. You'll feel a whole lot better. Okay. This one say, nothing to add. Just wanted to say how inspired I am of how you persevere. Oh, thank you, baby. That's my baby, too. He know who he is. Thank you so much. I, I look back and I'm just like, I'm proud of me. And the internet and everybody and their mom and daddy be trying to turn me down, especially lately. God damn, I say God damn what I do to y'all. But, um, whew, I didn't fall, y'all. I ain't gonna say I haven't. There's been plenty of days I've been over here in this bed crying to my family. Nicole should, like, I don't know how much longer I can do this. I'm in pain. 
I'm dizzy. This shit hurts. But, ooh, I'm sitting here. Girls, it raining. I'm sitting here now talking to y'all. So, thank you, Jesus, for keeping me. Because, especially the grief part, which nobody has asked questions on it yet, tried to take me out. Which it should have. That was my child. <laughs> Even before the grief, I was being taken out because of my child. But you guys will hear all about this soon. I'm ready to talk. So. Yeah. Did you lose your sex drive with menopause? If you. If you. How did you fix it? Baby no ma'am. Baby I'm having ready like little Caesar's pizza. <laughs> I'm ready to jump off the dress on you. I am. I don't know. I'm a weird case of menopause because don't mean to toot my own horn, but I don't experience dryness at all. Um, and my drive is I be telling y'all. I can't tell y'all too much. I have to start all the things. But sis be ready to go. Train a coat. <laughs> Anytime, any place. Throw that in a circle. <laughs> so yeah, I can't answer how to get it back. But what you're going to have to do is get your hormones under control. Oh, shoot. Because what really is taking your sex drive is your irritable. You're cranky. Your body is doing all kind of weird stuff. And you just don't want nobody to touch you. Don't want nobody to look at you. So it's like you got to get your hormones balanced. And baby, once you do... You feel like a seven, I don't want to say 16, 17, that's predatory, but you feel like a, that, se that seems a little predatory or, oh, I hate saying that, but you feel like a teenager again. You feel like a dog in heat. Like, just get through that stage, sis, get through that stage, and when you do, your boo gonna be running from you. I ain't even playing with you. Trust me on this one. You just gotta get through that you you gotta allow your body to adjust to the new you and that's what takes people out with menopause and stuff you're always like this isn't me i'm used to sprinting through the garden <laughs> jumping in circles and so that's what really drains you with menopause because you have to realize you're no longer the same person and you have to adjust to the new you you're going to spend a lot of time be like, I just want to feel like the old me. I'm going to do this to be the old me. And you might not ever see the old you again. So you're going to have to accept that you're a woman that has low estrogen, low progesterone, progesterone, progesterone. Yeah. And your body is different. Unless you're going to get on hormone therapy, which I can't because I got a deep family history of breast cancer. You got to have to adjust to the new you guys. You got to find you again. You're, you're not going to be the same at all. You're gonna The stuff you love is going to be different. Your whole freaking body change. And it's scary as heck. It's scary. I don't understand why we as women got to go through so much. We got to go through uh, puberty. We got to bleed. We got to have the kids. We got to go through menopause. And see, the thing is, usually when women go through menopause, they're like 50, 60. So they're already settled down, not moving around that much. Me, I'm in my prime. So it like took me down. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be feeling like this. I'm only 38, 30. Shh. Child. Child. <laughs> I, I wish I just would have known sooner that that's what this was all this time. Because once you recognize the problem, it's easy to fix. So... Balance your hormones, baby. Balance your mood. A lot of people get on a low dosage of Paxil, something for anxiety and, stress and depression. It elevates your mood because that's really the issue. You don't want nobody to touch you. You cranky. You don't even, You just went from feeling just fine and now you're dizzy. Now you're nauseous. Now your head hurt. Something hurting you didn't even know exists. Like a short pain will shoot through your arm. Your, blood, your bones hurt. So you don't be wanting nobody to touch you. 
rightfully so so just get your hormones balanced and um you'll be okay baby you'll be ready to bust it wide open then i tell her bring it back bust it, bust it wide open okay anyway so good good you said this but you know your cousins don't read girl <laughs> She always got something negative to say. <laughs> like, do. She my good sis, but let these people ask questions. If I put myself on a platform for people to ask questions, I don't mind people asking questions. All right? So, love Prayer Mountain for you, Do They have walking trails that will be a great addition. That really is not like <laughs> related to this, but I guess it is because the prayer mountain is one of the things I do to alleviate stress and anxiety. I wouldn't know if they have a trail because I don't walk the trail, but there's so much up there. A lot of you guys are like, I'm scared. And what if I get up there? Baby, it's a whole church. That is a church. <laughs> It be people up there playing basketball and everything. That you not just in the woods talking to the Lord. <laughs> it's a whole church, and people will come out and pray with you. I mean, they won't bother you, like, but like you can go in and yeah, it's a church, y'all. It's just up on a hill and a mountain, and they put spaces to where you can pray in in uh you can pray by yourself or whatever. And overlook the mountains so yeah I don't know about a trail the prayer mountain is Google because a lot of you guys always ask me how to get there and where it's at and I always tag it but you can uh, go online and find out everything you need to know y'all cuz I don't know I just go up there and pray and come home I don't know so Let's see what's next. We almost threw the first sheet and we only got three this question and answer. So, hold on, yeah. This next question is saying, have you found, oh, have you found a morning practice or routine that helps you with your mental health? Yeah, it's strange, but as soon as I get up in the morning, I just get to going. Because if I sit there and I'm like, what am I going to do today? What am I, I have notes in my phone. And I just killed it that, that list. Because if I sit there, I never move. Then the whole day done pass by, I'm still laying in the bed. Then the whole day done pass by, now I feel bad. Because the whole day done pass by and I ain't got nothing done. The whole day done pass by, I done sit in the bed all day. So now my bones and stuff hurting. So I literally get up. Of course, do the normal morning routine. Brush your teeth, wash your face and all that. Check my emails. And get the day started. I need to implement a workout routine, but here lately, honestly, I hadn't even felt like moving around a lot, so it was scary to work out, but ever since, you guys know, I just went to the hospital lately, ever since um, I went, I feel a whole lot better and feel like I can work out, like I literally feel alive again, so baby finna start, I ain't gonna start working out, I ain't gonna lie like that, but I'm gonna start walking. I love me some cardio, and that's the fastest way, way for weight to fall off of me is cardio. I've done it before, y'all, so. How did you prefer your spouse care for you while grieving? That is very tricky. Because... Everybody is different, but I was very specific on how I felt and what I needed, and I felt like my spouse still wasn't doing it. So it created this like bridge type gap between us because I'm like, why don't you want to see me better? I remember laying over in this bed. I was probably on like my eighth day. And all I really saw was that window. And I told my wife, I said, I think I'm really, really depressed. I think I'm low. I think I told y'all this. And she said, I know. You know? In nothing? <sighs> so what I needed was extra nourishment. 
I needed to be watched a little bit more. I needed, baby, come on, let's take a shower together. I needed, come on, get out the bed, let's go to the movies. I needed, let's, camera knew it was about to get a little deep. I ran out of memory. I needed, let's go for a walk. Come on, let's just go to the casino for the weekend. Don't worry about it. I got it. I'll pay that. I needed a little bit more care. I needed to be handled like a baby. I needed to have somebody who I could trust with my life that if I don't feel like I can go another day, you're going to push me. I needed to feel like I wasn't a burden. I needed to feel like you care simply. Like, I just needed a little bit more attention. And I feel like I feel like because I am the strong one, I was overlooked a lot. I heard a lot. You look pretty today. Oh, you, but you look good. But you was just smiling on that picture. But you was just out. And I think that people didn't realize that this is my job. So I had no choice but to go to the event to make that hot, however much I was getting paid. I had a choice, but what no matter how much money i have and how much income i have if i sit in this bed non-stop it will exhaust what i have saved right and that scares me so i still felt like before my savings and stuff got too low i needed to get up or it was going to make me lower because i have anxiety um thinking about not having money because I've been through the struggle, you know? So, um, I just wish everybody would have cared in general. I had like whole family members like, get up out the bed. You can, and y'all, I just lost the whole child. So I just wish people would have gave me a little bit more grace, especially on this her app, instead of trying to figure out who he was, what happened and all that, cause all that stuff is Google. Google Alerts tell you when you have it on your phone with your name, what people are searching and stuff. And, um, everybody was on my videos. You're so cranky. You so, yeah, I had lost the whole child. And like I told y'all in a recent video, I just wish I would have kept blogging during that time. Because people didn't give me grace. I had people calling me sensitive. Sensitive ass Libra and all kind of stuff. I guess because it looked like I was doing okay, but I wasn't. And I just, I just don't ever want anybody to feel that. And to answer your question, I just wish my spouse would have helped me a little more. Cared a little more. Related a little more. But unfortunately, they couldn't until they lost someone of a, of a um, close caliber too. Then they was like, I get it. Yeah, this is hard. So, I lost my dad at 21, unexpectedly, 24 now. How do you deal with the lack of motivation due to grief? Um, I'll make this plain and simple. When I sat over here, I told y'all about the cardinal at my bed. I mean, in my window, making me get up. I don't want to put it in my mouth. What you have to think about is your daddy watching you from wherever he at. I was going to say heaven, but everybody don't believe in the God and stuff. And, and say, will he want me down here like this? Will he want me giving up like this fan just did? Let me put on the charger. Would he want me sitting here not being productive? Would he want me this dang sad? Would he want me? And it'll get you up. You got to think about how your loved one that you lost 
would feel about how you laying around, about how you not doing nothing, about how you just gave up, about how you just content. They wouldn't want to see you like that. Man, you got to get up. I don't care if it hurt, if you're tired, you just got to get up. Because the saying is harsh, and I'm going to sound harsh, but life go on, baby girl. We are here for a borrowed time. You're going to be born, you're going to live, you're going to die. It's You can't get around it. So you just have to put that in your head and move on. Honestly, y'all, I'm a little irritated because I ain't had to work this hard on a wig in a minute. Baby, you know they come pre-cut, pre-plucked, pre-cut, pre-everything. I just be putting them on, playing on camera, but this one making me work. So let's move to the next question. Um, how do you mentally handle being everyone's everything, even on days when you just need a break? I don't. I be over here breaking down, having spazzes, and then here y'all go talking about some, oh, she just so crazy. Like one person even said one time, poor Nicole, poor Suge, and poor your dad. Oh, not all three of the people that was making my life hard at the time. <laughs> but it's just like, um, it's exhausting. It got to the point to where I was literally trying to just like leave the house and be away from everybody. Because I was just so tired. And it goes beyond my house. It's just my house expects it. And my, the rest of my family appreciates me a whole lot more. But my household, woo. But yeah, anyway, I'm getting off track. Um, you just gonna have to balance. I just balance it now, baby. I'll say no in a minute. I'll say let me alone in a minute. I won't even pay attention. Like now, I just do what's best for me because a shit will kill you. Cause it will literally kill you and have you stressed out and on medication. It will because it gets to the point to where you just like golly. Oh, it got it's so bad, y'all. But it's my fault. My Libra traits. I'm that person that love doing stuff to make people life easier, or love that, or love doing stuff to make people happy, and then I regret it because then it's like people start expecting it from me instead of appreciating it from me, and that's where the trouble come in. Like, I do stuff for you all day, every day. But when you start treating me like I got to do it, or when I do it, you got a problem with it, that's when there's a problem. So you just got to learn how to set boundaries, or I had to learn how to set, because you asked me in specific. I had to learn how to set boundaries. I had to learn how to not feel bad saying no. I had to learn to tell people, you grown, because everybody in my house grown. Ain't no kids over here. And you have to just be okay with knowing that sometimes you're going to have to say no. Sometimes you're going to have to, you're going to have to. Or you're going to drain yourself. You're going to tie yourself out. And I did at one point. It, it took me getting low to stop. I literally looked around and was like, but ain't nobody helping me. Okay, next say weight loss tick. Tips and tricks. I already covered that a little bit. Just gotta move around and um get some some cardio going and literally eat right. That don't mean you gotta eat bland. That don't mean you gotta have your cheap days. You gotta have balance, guys. We getting too big backish. We looking at all these Instagram recipes and stuff. There is no way we should be eating a basket that has hot wings, a hamburger, and chili cheese fries. Why are you eating all three in a setting? Like, that's the type of stuff we do now. And that's not normal. <laughs> so, um, the tips I do to lose weight, I'm going to run down them real, real quick. I don't eat after five. I don't drink. Oh, they got a lot. Ah. Mm, shit. I don't drink soda. Am I okay, girl? Do I need to go to the doctor? <laughs> I don't drink soda. I don't. I mean, I lied. I do drink ginger ale. But I try my hardest not to drink that ginger ale unless I'm having a gastric flare. Um, drink lots of water. I don't care what's going on. It's by me. 
I mean, whatever is going on. Take have you some water so you can get your daily intake of it. Um and implement them fruits and vegetables and them greens and them beans, honey, so that it'll come out. A lot of people don't talk about that with weight loss. Baby, it gotta come out. If you ain't in three, four days, where you think all that stuff is? In you, built up, making you fat. Get it out your system, y'all. It's really healthy for you to have a bowel movement every day. Like, you got to. Or, that's just the number one step, guys. So, um, those are some of my tips. No eating out the five. Move around. That I mean work out, just move around all day. Quit sitting idle so much. Um and cut back on so much fried. You'll be surprised. Cut that fried food and um that fast food out your um uh, diet. Boy, boy, have y'all seen Super Size Me? I tell y'all this all the time. The documentary where the man tried to eat McDonald's for a month. Man had everything. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, high sugar, high and was finna die. He had to stop. He couldn't even go the whole month. The food we eat is really damaging. But yeah, that's what I would say. Try that. Don't eat out the five. Switch your diet up. Move around a little bit more and watch how much better you'll feel. Okay. Or how much weight will start falling off. Which is ironic because, yeah, I ain't been doing none of that lately. But I ain't going to lie. I stress eat. And I've been a little stressed. Like, so I've been eating, baby. But... I still managed to come down some pounds. So, let's see what we got. Yeah, it's just about what you eat. You can meal prep and watch. Just meal prep. Prep the meals and put baked and greens and all of it up in there. And watch how good you do that week. I'm telling you, once you start seeing it coming off, it's going to motivate you to want it to keep coming out, baby. You're gonna start smelling yourself. You hear me? What God will give some what God will give someone to cleanse their body naturally? Shoot, some prune juice. <laughs> Get you some prune juice. <laughs> I'm laughing. Get you some beans and some prune juice and pomegranate juice. Shad. You gonna wanna fight me. I'm telling you, you'll be up in there like on uh, uh, Friday. I'm telling you. I'm debating y'all. Should I add extra lashes? <sighs> that struggle. My question is too long for the little box. What I was going to say at times or a lot of times you have to, you have to take a break. I'm sorry. You have to take a break from work or life in general. In your last vlog, you mentioned your life is busy. So mentally, does it benefit you to stay busy? To not have to spend time thinking about or stress over current things happening within your life? I understand social media is part of your job. What are the pros and cons to taking a break as it relates to views and sponsors? Or when do you say, hey, I need some time away? That was a lot. Um, what I will say is this, when I say, I say this all the time to my family and etc. I say, I need a break so bad, but I can't cause social media is my job. And when I say that's beyond YouTube, I just, social media just aggravates me sometimes. I think I told y'all that recently, like everything, it's not a safe space at all anymore in no kind of situation every time you come on this mood anything the shade room can post something serious and people cracking jokes under it like everything ain't funny every and it's oh this can get so deep y'all but i really hate it because it's only us i feel like we are the only group of people as in skin tone that wait for people to launch something wait for people to say something wait for people to post stuff just to say negative stuff just to make fun of people just you don't see no other races doing it bro and that's what aggravates me like
So that's why my break be about more than just YouTube and etc. I just be, it just seems like a negative doomed space to me now. So I don't really know how to answer that. And that was a very complex question. But what I will say right now is when I be needing a break, it's because social media becomes too much. As long as I'm having fun on here, we getting along, it's productive, it's, you know, then I'm good. When I take the breaks is when everybody got an opinion. Um, everybody is running over telling me what a commentary channel or something done said. And I'm just like, nah, I'm finna break. Because if I'm a post, y'all ain't got nothing to talk about. I mean, y'all do. As far as me, you don't. So... When I take my breaks from social media, the most I take is like a week. And I just be needing a refresher. It's kind of like your day job. It's like you need a vacation from work. You take your PTO a week out, go on a cruise, go chill at home for a week, and you're refreshed and you're ready to go back to work, you know? Oh, gosh. That's going to make my eye look sleepy. Pull it up. So when I um when I take my social media breaks, it's just to get back grounded and so that I can do stuff judge free <laughs> and really have fun doing stuff and don't have to have a camera all the time or don't have to be pulling out a camera nonstop. I'm just I'm just enjoying life, you know. But I do say all the time that social media is what keeps me going and keeps me out of the bed. And what I mean by that is I have to produce content for you guys to watch. Right? So that's what stops me from just laying over in this bed going to waste. I know I got to get up. I know I got to get this sponsorship out. I know I got to get some content. So it pushes me to get up. It's kind of hard to explain. So when I say YouTube saved me or if it wasn't for YouTube, that's because YouTube forces me to get up and get out the bed to get things done, you know? Um, and as far as my sponsors, in the last four years, I'm speaking sponsors, not stuff people sent to my P.O. box or PR packages. P.O. box or PR packages. My sponsors are very understanding. In the last four years, I've only had one person, and that just happened recently, that said, oh, it's taking you a little bit too long. We don't want the sponsorship anymore. And honestly, it kind of made me sad a little bit, but it was a relief, girl, because I was 10 behind. So I was like, okay, next. It didn't hurt me. I got 10 more to do, <laughs> nine more to do. So sponsors are very understanding. Um, a lot of times you can just say, I'm sick, I'm not feeling well, I need a little break. Um, and it, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, because the company's going to be around. But as far as, um, to sum that up, let's do a summary of that. When I say I need a break from social media, I mean the negativity. I mean the, because I love it. I love it if it's positive. I mean the judgment. I mean the, ugh, the nagging that I get so much. But when I say social media keeps me going, that means that it, it provides a way for me to get up. It motivates me to get out because I have to get content. Now, as far as the sponsors, they okay. Because a lot of the sponsors I've been working with for years, so they understand I'm a human. I, I have one or two new ones every now and then that just want to try to make my life a little hard. And that's okay. It's business. It's business. All right, guys. That's this question and answer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There will be more. There will be more. I ask these questions over on Instagram. So go ahead and follow me over there. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe on your way out. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.